Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and this is the August benchmark test for the Galaxy S21. So on the left we have the Exynos 2100, and on the right we have the Snapdragon 888. And we're just going to go into the Geekbench now, and run the CP benchmark. Now there hasn't been a camera update this month, so there won't be one to put together. So we're just doing the benchmark in August to see whether there have been any improvements at all. Last month we did see a few improvements over the June update, so hopefully there have been some additional improvements this month as well. I'll put some time codes in the description if you want to skip to the various parts of this video. I'll skip to the end of this one because the Geekbench ones aren't very interesting to look at, and we'll just see which one comes out on top. All right, some interesting results here for the Geekbench CPU. So both phones have had their single core drop, this month from last month. So in July we had 1075 for the Exynos single core and we had 1096 for the Snapdragon. Interestingly though, the Exynos has had its best multi-core score ever that I've recorded at least of 3390 and that does beat the April score where we had 3357 but last month in July we only had 3279 so that's a nice score to see. Now, as I've said before, I have got all these scores in a table on my site, so you can compare them. That's where I'm reading them from. But if we have a look at the Snapdragon result here, we can see that the multi-core has actually gone down to 3258. And that's one of the lowest that we've actually seen over the last six or seven months. Okay, I'm now gonna move on to the compute test here, and we'll just see how that goes. And we'll skip to the end and see what the results are like. Okay, so nothing too interesting there in the compute scores. We have gone up a bit since last month, so on the Exynos we had 6980 last month, so it's nice to see we've gone back up to over 7000. It's not the best score that we've seen on the Exynos, that was all the way back in May. And with the Snapdragon we've increased our score by one point since July, which isn't very good particularly. Comparing to last month it has increased, which is great, on both, only by a single point on the Snapdragon however, where we've increased by over 300 points on the Exynos. Right, so I've let the phones cool down to a more suitable temperature and we're gonna run through the Antutu benchmark now. So this is version 9.1.0, as you can see at the top here on both, and I have updated the 3D files as well. So we'll just see how these two do and whether they can actually beat them this month. Right, so the Antutu benchmark is finished and the Exynos has managed to score 694,514, which is a very small improvement of just around 3,000 points since last month where it scored 691,751. The Snapdragon has done really well actually this month, which is great to see. So it's gone well over the 745,000 mark here, whereas the last couple of months has actually been struggling. So last month we had 697,011. So a massive improvement there for the Snapdragon over last month's score. I can see that the temperature of the Exynos as well, we've got up to about 42 degrees Celsius, whereas the Snapdragon only managed to hit 40 degrees. I did notice actually during the encoding section that the Snapdragon did seem to freeze up a bit there. I'm not quite sure what was going on. But anyway, these are the results. And it's good to see that the Snapdragon is back on form as it was previously. We can see that the Exynos still beats the Snapdragon in the Terracotta test here, but the Refinery and the Swordsman tests are still beating the Exynos by quite a long way. So I'll let these cool down and then we're gonna go into the stress test. 
Okay, so we're at a more reasonable temperature now and we're just gonna run the 15 minute stress test on both phones. And we'll just compare it to last month and we'll have a look at the charts and we'll see how they get on. Okay, so let's take a look at the charts here and just compare them to July's update. So overall, I'd say that the August update is probably faring a bit worse than the July update. We can see in July that the CP performance was sort of hovering around the 80% mark and going over and above it most of the time. But we have a look at the August update here and it's really sort of just hovering around the 70% mark a lot of the time during this test. Now the office here has been a bit cooler than it was in July, so I don't think we can really blame the heat for this one. But yeah, overall in this month's test, I would say the CPU performance has gone down on average. Look at these spikes here down to 40%. Okay, so take a look at the cores here. We can see they look very similar indeed comparing the two months. There's a few more drops on the August update compared to July update, but overall this is almost a sort of mirror image where we're seeing this, you know, two gigahertz really being this sort of max that this CPU and its cores are allowed to run at. So it doesn't matter if we use the Thermal Guardians at all, it still doesn't seem to affect this. And it's quite sad to see that the cores are still getting nowhere near the three gigahertz mark. Okay, so having a look at the Snapdragon here, I'd say that the performance is very similar to July. Maybe not quite so good in some areas, but better in others. So if we have a look around the start of the test, it seems to be, you know, not quite reaching the 100% mark it did in July. But as we move further into the test, around the sort of five minute to the sort of nine minute 30 mark, we can see I, overall the performance is slightly better compared to last month's. You can see in July it was sort of hovering just above 40%. Now it does struggle at about the 549 mark here in the August, but overall after that for the next few minutes it is a lot higher, ranging between 50 and 60%. Still not brilliant, but not terrible either in comparison to the Exynos at least. And now if we have a look at the cores and their clock speed, we can see very clearly at the end of the test, the Snapdragon throttles all the way down to that under two gigahertz mark, which was a shame really because July did seem to fix that from the previous update and now it seems to have come back. So overall, brilliant performance throughout most of the tests, but then it does just throttle itself back down to about 1.8 gig towards the end of the test. Okay, the phones have now cooled down sufficiently to move on to the wildlife test on both. So we'll just compare the results to last month once the test is finished. Okay, so the wildlife scores are looking pretty good. So they've both increased from the July update. So in July we had 5665 on the Exynos and 5678 on the Snapdragon and they have both increased. You can see that average frame rate slightly higher there on the Exynos, 34.7 compared to 34.5 on average. So certainly it looks like it's improved somewhat. Okay, next up we have the Slingshot test. They've both cooled down sufficiently. So let's uh, give these a comparison as well, see how they get on. Okay, so the slingshot test, and we get the maxed out score on the Exynos still, which is nice. And we get a score of 8,006 on the Snapdragon. So better than the score last month of 8,005, but still not good enough compared to the Exynos. You can see the average frames per second in the graphics tests here, 75, 50, and 52 on the Exynos versus 59 and 35. Physics scores are still maxed out on the Exynos but they're not maxed out on the Snapdragon. Okay, so that was the August update. Like I said, there's gonna be no camera comparison this month because there's been no camera update, so there's nothing to compare. I do feel that the updates for these two phones are gonna slow down now in terms of you know feature improvements compared to the first few months of the device's life, which is just the way things go. But we'll keep on comparing the benchmarks just to see if they do squeeze out any more performance before the S22 comes out. And if you enjoyed this video, please do click on the like button, that really helps out. And be sure to click on the subscribe button and the bell as well to be notified whenever I upload a new video. You can also become a member of the channel by clicking on the join button, that really helps out. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.